1988 in Glasgow. I grew up initially with my mother and father, who were both social workers. And after a few years, we moved to the west of the city, it was just my mum and my brother. Initially, my childhood was quite lonely, so I didn't have a, a wide social circle. It was very small, so I would spend my days at school, and after school, I would come home. So then it would just be me, my mum and my brother. And what I would do, we'd watch TV. That was a big feature in our childhood. We didn't do a lot of outdoor activities um, in the sense of things that you would go and pay to do. What we would do would be making jewellery, playing with my dolls. I was very active in lots of sports, gymnastics, athletics. Um, I enjoyed a lot of outings with my mum, biking, ba home baking, things like this. Um, in summer, I uh, became very active, so I'd go and stay with my grandmother and my grandfather in Ayrshire. And it was activity after activity, which I loved. We would go swimming every single day. Um, we would go into town, we would go shopping. Um, we would do more baking, which I loved because my gran is an amazing cook. I didn't have any religious views as a child. Um, we didn't grow up with a religion, so there was no Bible in the house, no Quran. There was nothing like that. Um, my family, as a you know, my wider family, so my aunts and my uncles, they were they're scientists. So a lot of the views that I had um, maybe came from them. So there was no impact. Do I believe in God? Is there a God? There was no such discussions. I found out when I was much much older, speaking to my mum about religion, that apparently I used to go to Sunday school, but I have no recollection of that whatsoever. So in high school I took religious education, um, much to the dismay of my teachers. Um, I decided to switch subjects because I wanted to learn a little bit more about religion. At this stage I had a desire to get some answers, not to adopt a religion, not to become Christian or a Sikh or Catholic. It was just to find the answers to these questions I had since I was a young girl. Now, at school, um, I didn't get those answers. Um, the religions that they taught, they didn't make any logical sense. And I thought, why would I have faith? This is from God. Because surely God should be able to explain to me simply the answers. So my high school didn't teach Islam. Uh, they, at the time, it was quite superficial. They said that they couldn't teach Islam because they didn't have a religious education teacher who'd studied that religion. Either way, I was happy. To me, it wasn't a real religion. It was barbaric. The Muslims were crazy nutcases. <laughs> they were just people that would terrorise innocent people. They would blow up buildings. So for me, I was glad. I didn't think that I would ever become Muslim, that I would ever entertain the idea of Islam. So it's quite ironic now. <laughs> I, am, I am a Muslim. I had no interaction with um, people of other ethnicities, of other religions. Um, there was perhaps two or three students in my school, but they were very westernised. They had adopted our culture, so I had no real ability to see what really is Islam, what is a Muslim. So from there on in, I thought, well, I've learned about the real religions. They're a load of rubbish. I don't believe in them. So I just carried on. I just became a normal Scottish teenager. I done what you would expect of any sort of British teenager. I went out clubbing, I drank alcohol, just had a laugh. Just there was there was no point to it. looking back I just think at that time I thought that's what you did with your life, but it, to me now it just seems it just seems pointless. And where my journey into Islam began was I in two thousand and five I started working in a call centre. And in that call centre, it was predominantly Pakistani people that were in there that were Muslims. And they were not crazy. <laughs> they were not anything that I had imagined that the media had portrayed. Um, and in actual fact, they became my best friends. And this is the first time I felt I had real, true friendship where these people really cared for me. I really cared for them. And there was a group of us. So there was Saima, there was Shakila, there was Talib, Nabil and Atif. And it was us, us lot together and I would just, initially it was just, I was interacting with them and we would just do normal things, go to the cinema, we would go out for meals. But one thing that stood out, out to me was the fact that what they'd done was very respectful. 
they had a lot of respect for themselves, they wanted to have a good image, there was a lot of things they wouldn't do, so they wouldn't come out clubbing with me, you know, once I had a birthday I invited them and they declined and I couldn't understand why. So slowly, slowly, it was just their behaviours, their mannerisms that introduced me to Islam. When I was working in the call centre with the other Muslims, uh, one of the most profound moments for me was actually during Ramadan. And uh, I remember the moment very clearly. Uh, we, were, we were in the Avon's office in Baird Street. And my group of friends that I'd mentioned uh, earlier, they were fasting and they were about to open their fast. And uh, Sam Saima, she actually um, handed me uh, a box of spring rolls that her mother had made and she offered them to me if I wanted some. And to me that was just such a profound moment. You know, here I am having eaten all day, probably not even realising, you know, drinking in front of them, having water or something, and they're offering me food. They're breaking their fast with me. And that was a really profound moment for me. So something happened in that moment, I became curious. What are these Muslims doing? They're starving themselves and giving their food away to me. Like, who am I? Why are they doing this? And then I started having questions. You know, what is Islam? Why are they Muslim? You know, are, are these kind attributes that they have, um, their upbringing? Is it just these specific people? Is it part of Islam? What is it? And so I started to ask them questions. I started to inquire, be inquisitive. And something that really shook me is that they weren't proud. Well, I think this, or I feel this, or I know that. They said, this is what the Quran says, this is what the Sunnah says, this is what the Hadith says. They had proof for everything. And never at any point did they say to me, just believe, just have faith. We know this is the truth. They didn't tell me that, they, they gave me the answers. And when they didn't know the answers, they would go and find out and they would be humble enough to admit, I don't know, I can't answer that, I can't tell you. So here I was, standing Islam in the face and it was the truth. I couldn't deny it was the truth. But I wasn't ready to accept being a Muslim. I never wanted to adopt a religion. I just wanted to know the answers and I thought that would be enough. But in learning about Islam, I realised that believing is not enough. Islam is a way of life. They've got their own economical, political, social, legal system. If I was to become a Muslim, if I was to adopt that identity, everything I'd ever known would have to change. But I didn't know if I could commit to being Muslim. I didn't know if I could commit to what Islam required from me. So I had a, what I would call a trial period. And I was going to try and see if I could do what Islam required of me. So initially it was simple things for me, like stopping eating haram meat. Um, being a vegetarian previously, that wasn't so hard for me. Um, then it was stopping drinking alcohol. Uh, then it was stopping going out to nightclubs, which was a large part of my social life. Um, I started to dress more modestly, so I went half of my wardrobe. Um, and slowly, slowly, I realised that I was able to overcome these hurdles but still, I was apprehensive, you know, it was a lifetime commitment. If I became Muslim, that was it. And I wanted to be sure that I could give that commitment to Allah. And it just took a long time to get that courage, to take that leap, to know that I was doing the right thing and that Allah would see right by me and that my fears would melt away. And my, my fear mainly was telling my family how will my mum cope, my brother, you know, my aunt and my uncle, they're not religious, my grandfather. And I think that when you're making such a huge life change that you will start to imagine them reacting in ways that aren't even within their character because you're just so scared because it's such a big change and it's something completely different. So every Sunday, uh, my mum would collect me from work and drive me home. And every Sunday, I would try and muster up the courage. And before I knew it, we were home. And I didn't say anything. And this would happen week after week after week. I felt like it was never going to end. Sunday was my day of torment. But then Ramadan was coming. 
and I knew that I wanted to embrace my Islam during Ramadan. I wanted to fast for that month. I wanted to be in that environment. So, a few weeks before, I just mustered up the courage and told her. And Alhamdulillah, she accepted it. She just questioned why. But we didn't have a long discussion. We're not a family for having in-depth conversations. But I told her and the relief, it just washed over me. It made me feel silly. I've been worrying all this time. And it went really well. I uh, went with my my friends, some of my very good friends, same as well, Sam, and we went to Glasgow Central Mosque and I took my Shahada through tears of joy. We were all crying, it was so emotional and it was such a, it was an experience that I wasn't expecting. We went uh, and at first we were told to go to the, the study room and I would take my Shahada there with the Imam. I wanted to do it properly, I didn't want to do it just with two witnesses, which is all the requirement. I wanted to, in the mosque, let everyone know, get a certificate, I'm Muslim. <laughs> I found the answers. So we went and the Imam sat me down. He started asking me strange questions. Why do you want to become Muslim? Is someone forcing you? Do you want to do it? And I'm like, yeah, that's why I'm came. Please just let me take my Shahada. So he just obviously wanted to make sure I knew what Islam is. I knew what being Muslim meant. And then that day, um, I t uh, after I, I prayed, it was the Juma Friday prayer. So we went and we prayed and I remember feeling so nervous because of all the things I had learned. I didn't know how to pray Juma. <laughs> so I was standing there and my nerves and I started to forget the, the prayers and the recitation that I'd learned. So I'm copying my friend and I'm like, am I allowed to be looking at her at the corner of my... And we prayed. And that day was very emotional. The Imam gave a speech and he was saying how there was a birth. That was me, which I found out later because I'm a revert to Islam. I'm a newborn in the eyes of Allah. There was also a marriage and a death in that whole time that I was there. And so in 2009, I finally reverted to Islam. I did change my name for two reasons. One, I didn't really, I wasn't too fond of my original name but also I wanted something with a bit more meaning. So I chose the name Maya, as originally called Robin. My journey to Islam, to becoming Muslim, was very easy. I had a lot of support. I had a lot of friends around me, even my own family. Were, well, my mother, my brother, they were very supportive of me. Um, I remember when I went to take my shahada, my mum was calling me just to make sure, good luck, hope everything goes okay. But where my struggles really began was when I started to go to an Islamic class and I met other sisters. And this is where I learned about the proper attire that we should be covered. And um, for a long time, I thought, I don't want to cover. My hair is so beautiful. I don't want it to go away. But slowly, slowly I started to educate myself. I started to learn a lot more about what hijab is, what is the purpose of it. One of my friends gave me um, just a silly little analogy. They said, I've got two sweets, one covered, one uncovered, and I dropped them on the floor. Which one would you eat? Which one would you take? Goes, the one, I said, the one with the, the cover, of course. And they said, well, that's how we view our women in Islam. They are the most precious thing to us. Of course, we would want them to be covered. And this is not something that I was being told is what men want, but this is what Allah wants. This is our protection. This is our safety. And I didn't want to go out without it. For me, I love hijab by this point. I'd, I'd find a love for hijab. I'd find a love for covering. I understood the reasons behind it. And I wanted to fulfill that obligation to Allah. But I was scared to tell my mum. So I was standing in the kitchen, kitchen and I was ironing my hijab. And I used to tell her I wear hijab now. And she got very angry. And she was crying. 
and it was so painful for me and she's saying this is oppression and at this point I'm not eloquent I can't explain to her I have the knowledge but to give it to her I, I, I don't know where to start I don't know the right place and I'm just shouting back no it's not so I remember walking out of the house and going to my back garden and I was in floods of tears and I was crying my heart out and I phoned Zara who had now become my Islamic teacher, mashallah, she's very good and I'm crying to her and I said to her Zara I have to take it off, I can't do this anymore and she gave me so much comfort and so much love and so much strength she said to me Allah will never give you a test that you cannot bear there will never be something in your life that you cannot overcome it is there for a reason so I found a lot of comfort in her words and I put it on and I wore it and I left the house and my end point with my wider family came when it was my graduation and my mother and my aunt and my uncle came and I was hiding from them I was in my graduation gown, I was wearing this big black uh, graduation cloak and a black hijab and I was just all black and I was nervous I was so nervous and um, it was about to begin so I said okay we need to take our seats now but I'll see you afterwards I just wanted to get it over and done with I thought look when they see me walk across the stage they'll see the hijab maybe they'll talk about it and then I won't need to be there when she sees it for the first time I won't see that initial moment and alhamdulillah that's what happened it was too late for them to come and greet me before so I went up stage I accepted my award and I came down and I could see in their faces that they had some apprehension, they were shocked but they accepted it. My grandfather's not a man of many words um, so when I went to see him um, he'd been informed I believe by my family that I was Muslim and that I covered and we've never spoken about it, me and my grandfather and what he done he says to me uh, all of your grandmother's scarves are upstairs in the bottom drawer and I've uh, looked them all out and they're all there for you you know for your and he wouldn't say anything he just went for your and that's when I knew that through that trial through that for me that was a very hardship um, that there was light at the end of the tunnel if you want to call it that there was peace at the end for me and that my family accepted the hijab and that now they understand the reasons behind it and uh, you guys don't know this as you're recording it but I've wanted to wear a baya for a long time I've wanted to put on the proper covering and I've been too nervous and I actually had discussion um, about the abaya um, with Ahmed who's another revere and he said to me uh, you, you will find the strength um, your husband he will give you that guidance and you'll be there so when I was asked to come on this show I thought I don't want to go anywhere and like I know where I'm covered you know my arms down to my feet my my head but I said I don't want to go on and wear my dress I don't think that's right I want to be a good example to my sisters out there to Muslims to people that are thinking about reverting so today I put on the abaya for the first time Before I became Muslim, um, I was a little bit apprehensive about reading the Quran. I knew it um, was ruled in Arabic, so I was a bit worried that, you know, little things can I get it in English, which I could. The first one I got, it was just a literal translation. There was no context, there was no understanding. And for me, even though it was written in English, it was like Shakespeare, alien, like, well, I don't know what this book is saying. Um, but thankfully, um, some family friends, um, they, they gave me a Quran and it was a Quran meant for children. I gave the background story, um, so what happened um, when it was revealed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. And that's what started my love even more for this Quran. So now whenever anyone asks me about Quran, I say to them, don't be scared about reading it. You know, I'll give them a copy of it um, that I think would be 
a good one to read because although every single Quran has the same words in it, some are very good at explaining it. And for me, the my my favourite part of the Quran is in Surah Al Baqarah. It's in this verse that Allah sets a challenge for the whole of mankind that if you don't believe that this book is the word of God, then just produce one verse like it. The same style, the same transparency. But if you can match that, then you can disprove Islam. And that was that had such strong meaning for me because I thought of all these people that say the Quran's not real, Allah doesn't exist, uh, Muhammad made everything up, they'll have lengthy debates for hours and hours, but they won't do this one simple challenge. Write a verse, how long can it take them? But in 1400 years, not one person has been able to do this. And the second part of this, uh, this surah that that meant a lot more to me is that Allah goes on to say that you will not be able to that you will not be able to write a verse like it and I just think to anyone out there that's doubting Islam then take this challenge come forth and bring a verse Islam means everything to me. Islam is my whole life. I believe it's given me everything that I want. Not, not materialistic things, but it's given me contentment in my heart. It's give, given me the understanding to life. It's told me why I'm here, what I should be doing. It's given me comfort knowing that Allah is out there, that there is a God that I can uh, worship him and obey him and from how I would describe it in humanly terms in his eyes I'm doing the right thing you know no longer do I need to um, lead my life by my own moral compass I've got God there to tell me what is right and what is wrong and I know when in my actions that I'm doing the right thing it's given me a much better relationship with my mother you know she now, she's a very um, private woman, stiff upper lip sort of thing. Now, every day she tells me she loves me. Um, Mashallah, I would never have found my husband um, had I not become Muslim. He's Muslim, of course. And I just think that is an avenue that if I had never taken my Shahada, I would never have experienced this. It's just... It's overwhelming that my life now feels complete. No longer am I ch chasing after the latest dress or the latest car or job. I have everything I need to keep me content right now at this age. I grew up in an environment where what I was told was that you're meant to go out, you're meant to travel the world, you're meant to experience many different things, date different people, to try and attain something and when you've attained it, get more. Earn money and when you've got money, earn more money. When you drink, learn to drink and then drink a bit more. Um, gluttonous, it was just, you know, and to me it had no real value. It was like, I'm going to live, inshallah, 60, 70, 80 years and I'll have achieved nothing. Now I understand my place in this world and what I'm here for and that's to obey Allah and complete my duties as a Muslim, spread Islam and be an example to the, the community and my sisters around me.